What is up guys? Welcome back for our break week of the GPC. This week we are taking on an opponent from the opposite conference like I mentioned in our transactions video from yesterday. If you haven't seen that, go and check it out. It'll make a lot more sense when you see our team. I won't go over a uh, team matchup. Uh, just let you know that obviously Drew, our opponent this week, Little Bigness, has the team that you see in front of you. I prep for most of his threats. Uh, he's got a very interesting prep, and uh, let's get right into it. It's going to be a pretty short video, so I'll leave it on normal so I can really give you the play-by-play, -play, but I'm going to lead off here with my Thunderous because it is Scarfed. Turns out his Manectric uh, is Intimidate before Mega Evolution because we're playing on a balanced Hackmons. I told him it was okay, don't worry about it. I figured here he would Mega Evolve just to, to, to correct the situation, but he's actually going to switch right out of his Mega Manectric as I also switch out of my Thunderous, which is Scarfed. And I'm going to go into Florges, he's going to go into his Swampert. Uh, I'm just going to go for a Moonblast on this turn as he gets up his rocks, no big deal. I do have Aerodactyl to get rid of these as uh, we are going to get some hefty damage off on this Swampert, which is nice. He's now going to switch out into his Azelf, and uh, this thing is going to take upwards of 50%. So I'm thinking, okay, well I can just wish, see what he wants to do, and then on the following turn fire off another Moonblast and I should be fine because I don't see leftovers on this turn. So... We should be good, right? So I'm just going to throw up a wish. And for the second time this week, if you guys caught our NPL Miners battle, I'm going to get a defensive Pokemon trick to choice item. So he's going to give me a choice band as I throw up a wish, which really isn't the best. And uh, now he's got my leftovers, so he's over 50%. Not looking very good. I'm just going to switch out here, go into my Aerodactyl knowing that I can catch the wish as he's going to U-turn. I figured he'd go into Manectric here, but he actually chooses to go into his Swampert. I'm guessing to uh, to put on a little more, a little bit more pressure on my Aerodactyl in case I'm uh, Focus Sash, which makes sense. I'm going to defog his rocks away. He's going to go for a Scald. Luckily, he's not going to get the burn. Arrow's not going to put in a lot of work this game, unfortunately, because it's just going to be here to get up rocks. So uh, he's just going to Scald us again. That's fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go out into my Zygarde, I believe, and I'm going to set up a sub in front of this, um, this Swampert. I am the standard sub coil with a little bit different... Uh, EVs than your standard set. He's gonna go in, out into his fortress and I'm here like, okay, well this thing is pretty much setup fodder for me. I'm just gonna get up a coil. It should be fine. He can't break my sub after I coil. And he reveals the tech HP ice on his fortress, which is amazing prep on uh, on Drew's part. He is able to break my sub with a crit. Didn't matter. It does upwards of 29%. Uh, gonna go for the thousand arrows. Going to get off a little bit of damage on this. He's gonna go for another HP ice. I'm fine with that. It's not doing too much damage, so I am just going to throw out another thousand arrows. I don't see leftovers either. I'm going to crit him on this turn, which is quite important because I'll be able to knock him out on the following turn. He's going to get up a spike. No big deal. I'm just going to go for another thousand arrows right here. Knock out his fortress. No more big threat with HP ice coming my way. Uh, next up, he's going to go into his Manectric, which is going to scare me out, obviously, with its HP ice. And uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm just going to go straight into my Florges, which is now choiced. No way to heal it up. He's going to Mega Evolve. I think he's going to go straight for the HP Ice, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to do very little. It's going to do 14% to my Florges. Now I can just throw out another Moonblast here, knowing that I'm choiced into it. Uh, I'm just going to get off a little bit more damage on this Swampert. Now what I should have done here was stayed in, uh, even though he was going to go for rocks. But I thought I could take advantage of this Swampert by going into Zygarde on his rocks. And then getting up a sub and start uh, to coil up again. And potentially win the game from there. Uh, but Scald is going to be a 2-hit KO on my sub. And it's going to be very difficult for me to set up because of the amount of HP that his Fortress left me with. So, uh, and the fact that it got up a spike. So it's going to be uh, kind of hard right here. I'm going to go for a Coil. It's going to be a little bit repetitive on the next couple of turns. He's going to go for a Scald, break my sub. I'm going to get up another sub. And then I'm going to start hitting him with some Thousand Arrows. What I should have done was gone for another Coil, even though he could break my sub because I'd be doing a lot more damage than what you're going to see. Uh, he's going to Scald again just damage and now we're, we're gonna see the thousand arrows damage and it does very very little uh, it does something like yeah 28% to the Swampert he's gonna break my sub with another Scald I'm still healthy enough to set up another sub in front of this thing and then fire off two more thousand arrows so I'm okay with that I am gonna get up the sub right here he's gonna go for another Scald I'm gonna break uh, not gonna break my sub thankfully he doesn't crit it and uh, I think even a crit wouldn't break it does like 15% max uh, gonna go for a thousand arrows gonna get off 31% this time. So not too bad He's gonna go for another scald break my sub now He's sitting at 42 and I'm thinking okay Well, I could probably just thousand arrows here. No reason to set up a sub leave myself super low uh, I'm gonna take a scald. Yes, but then I can recover off the damage uh, But unfortunately scald does what it does best and it burns me uh, Which is actually going to allow his swamper to live my next thousand arrows So this is not the best situation, but it's actually also not the worst because as you guys are gonna see my megalopony set is power-up punch this week 
because I felt like it did re really well against him. He's going to reveal the counter on his uh, Swampert. I'm just going to go into Lopany. I know the power up punch kills from here, uh, so I have no problem firing one off. If he switches into Azelf, that's fine. It's dead on the following turn. His Swampert comes in at 7% after rocks. So I'm just going to knock this thing out. Uh, obviously, it's leftovers. I don't have to worry about Rocky Helmet. Now he's going to go out into Slurpuff, uh, which I was kind of worried about, but I am just going to go for a return, and it turns out the Slurpuff is slightly defensive. And it's Babiri Berry Calm Mind. He's going to get a crit on his Draining Kiss, uh, which is going to put him at 55%, but he's still not faster than me, so I'm going to be able to knock him out with the following return. Uh, and then he's going to uh, go out into his Manectric to get off the Intimidate, risking a potential speed tie even though I'm not max speed invested. And he's just going to fire off a, a safe flamethrower which catches my entire team including uh, Thunderous in case I wanted to switch out into that on an electric move. Now I'm going to go into Florges knowing uh, that this is probably my only way to damage this thing enough to put it in range of Dark Pulse or HP Ice from Thunderous. Uh, I am just going to fire off a Moonblast. He goes for a Hidden Power Ice again, trying to catch one of my switches into uh, into Thunderous, and I'm going to crit the Moonblast. Quite important getting rid of this Manectric right here, as you guys will see, because Drew's play is to go into his Zelf, and I saw the Choice Ban already. I know that this thing is physically offensive, and now we are going to start sweeping, my friends. We are going to go into our physically defensive Kabutops, which I sp specifically brought Choppleberry on uh, for his Embor. I could switch into any one of his Embor's attacks outside of a Wild Charge, which I didn't think he would run because Aerodactyl is really the only thing that it hits, and Super Power hits that thing super hard anyway. Uh, so I brought this as a Flare Blitz switch in. I'm max Fizz Def, but I also have Swords Dance. So you guys are going to see on this turn, he's going to go for a Zen Head, but he's not going to flinch me. It's only going to do 33%. I'm going to get a defense drop, which might, may or may not come into play, but I'm going to set up a swords dance, and I'm essentially going to get two dragon dances off in one turn. I'm plus two, plus two, which is really cool. Uh, and then I'm going to go for a waterfall and knock this thing out. Now, the only way his Lando outspeeds me at this point is if it's Choice Scarfed. The problem is, if it's Choice Scarfed, the only way that it can knock out both my Kabutops and my Thunderous, and it is in fact max speed Choice Scarf, so it does outspeed my Choice Scarf Thunderous, which I only EV to outspeed his High Dragon, which he has in the back. Uh, if he crits Rock Slide on my Kabutops because of this minus one defense, I could lose right here. But Kabutops is a god and does not get crit, only takes 31% even at minus one defense from a sheer force Rock Slide from Lando and is able to live, get another boost in speed, go for a waterfall, and knock this thing out. So even if for some reason it wasn't um, sheer force, uh, and he didn't knock me out, but he flinched me, I still got the boost in speed, which put me above his speed, even a, a scarfed max speed Lando. So, Kabutops coming through, getting two kills in the end. This is what I want to see Kabutops do for the rest of the season, guys. I want to see this thing put in work. That's why I picked it up. <clears throat> We Armor is an amazing ability. Uh, I brought it specifically for Embor so I could switch in on Flare Blitz, take very little damage, and then be faster than even a Scarfed Embor. That's how I evade this thing. And then Waterfall just puts in so much pressure on his team. I considered running Giga Drain uh, over Stone Edge just for the Swampert, uh, but I opted not to. I just went with uh, pretty standard coverage. I think it was Swords Dance. Uh, Waterfall X Scissor was for uh, a couple of things on his team to make sure that I could knock out his Eye Dragon, uh, not have to risk a miss on Stone Edge, and uh, the last move was, of course, Stone Edge. So, uh, Kabutops coming through. Guys, like I said, I still need nicknames for both Kabutops. Um, well, Kabutops, Ditto, and uh, Aerodactyl. So if you guys got any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. This is a really fun game. Check out Drew in the description as well as all the other coaches in the GPC if you want to see their battles for this break week. Some of them will be uploading them, some of them won't. And uh, yeah, make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!